The focus of this module is on inputs to Python, where we might request some information from the user during the running of the program. Let's go to the Jupyter Notebook, and then we're going to do a couple exercises with the Temperature Control Lab, just to learn the input function and how to convert it to a string or to a value that we can use in our program. This is going to be lesson number eight in our sequence. And so if you just select that and open it up, you'll get the Jupyter Notebook for inputs. All right, so by default, the input function is going to be a string. And so if we're returning an input from a user, we'll want to maybe convert it to an integer or float. For the example of the incubator, in an egg temperature controller, certain types of eggs may require a different temperature target. And we can put that into our code to ask the user what type of egg it would be. We could also use input to manually change the power to the heaters if we wanted to run it, uh, the heaters ourselves. Now if we run this code below, it's going to ask you for a number, and then it's going to come up as an with an error. All right, so let's go ahead and run this and see if we can figure out uh, the error. We have the input function right here with the question inside here. And then down below, it's going to have how many eggs do you have? And let's just say five. Now there's an error here that says eggs equals eggs minus two. It's an unsupported type for string. All right, because we have an integer here and a string right here. And uh, we can print out, let's just go ahead and print eggs. And we can also print what is the type of that variable. And if we run it again, then we'll say that it's equal to five, but it's a string. So we just need to convert it. We need to convert eggs to an integer. All right, so there it is. Now when we run it again, and we do five, then we're going to have another error, but it's not here at this line. It's when we're printing out eggs. So this is because we need to convert it back to a string to add it to other strings. Let's try this one more time. Okay, your hatchlings are three because two are still developing. So I just did some math on the number of eggs and calculated how many are hatching uh, versus are uh, the baby chicks. Okay, so let's go on down to, let's enter a number. Okay, enter a number 3.3. Okay, now again, this one is going to be an error. All right invalid literal for int with base 10 okay because we had 3.3 so maybe one of the things that we need to do first of all is just go ahead and convert that to a float 3.3 and then it gives us 8.3 and then later we can say we really want to make that an integer so I'm going to make it an integer later all right, so it's just going to remove anything beyond the decimal point and make it into an integer. All right, um, all right. so let's go ahead and go on down to the activity now. We want to make a function that uses input for two values. The function should take the two values, add the second number to the first number 20 times, and then return the new value. Make sure to use a for loop in your function. Go back to lesson on loops or functions if you're getting stuck. All right, so let's define a function. So this function is going to be, I'll do def. I'll call that add 20. And I'll have a number as an input. And then inside this, I'm going to have for i in range 20, I want to add it 20 times. 
and uh, I'll have two numbers actually this is going to be number one and number two and then I'm going to say that number one equals number one plus number two all right and then down below I can call this function and let's go ahead and print add 20 and we'll do 2 comma 1 all right and let's see what did I do here that is a mistake oh I need to return something I need to return number 1 all right so there I have 22 because I started with 2 and then I'm adding this second number to it 20 times. And I could just do, you know, number one uh, equals number one plus number two times 20, uh, or I could do it with this loop right here. Okay, so we've practiced using a function. We have a for loop, and then don't forget, like I forgot, to return that number from the function and then this will become a value 22 we could do this as well if it's easier okay so I'll do 2 comma 3 and that's going to be equal to 62 alright so there's an example um, we need to uh, add now the inputs to this because we don't know necessarily what those numbers are uh, beforehand. Okay, so we can below, we can define our function up here, and now we want to request what is number one. And then we can do number two as well. And don't forget to convert these to floating point numbers. Okay, we can do that all in one line. All right, and then in here, instead of two and three, we can ask the user what they want to add together. So I'll do two, and then I'll do one, and then there's our result of 22. And I'll run this one more time and do 2 and 3 and there's 62 okay so we've asked the user for input we didn't know what those numbers are until the user ran the code and then gave us those values okay now we're gonna go on to using a while loop to keep asking the user for an input for the hot light power percentage we will make code so that if the entered value is 0 the program stops so this is something similar to what we might use for the incubator you could keep turning it to different temperatures or turn off the system completely based on user input all right let's import tc lab that's already been installed for us previously and then we're going to do for let's see this is going to be while um all right then we're going to do hot uh, I'll just do LED is not equal to zero all right so when it's not equal to zero we're going to run this code and when it is equal to zero it will just end all right so let's go ahead and just uh, create our connection lab equals TC lab dot TC lab that's going to connect to the temperature control lab and let's see we'll initialize this value of LED and I can say that is going to be equal to none okay so that's not any number okay we'll try to see if it's not equal to zero if there's an error there we can always put in some value like one that's not equal to zero now let's go ahead and change that um, LED and we're going to use the LED value that is <clears throat> currently there and now we can ask the user we can ask the user for an input okay what is the new LED value 
All right, and um, let's do that before we put in LED there. Okay, so LED equals, and then we need to convert this to a floating point number with input new LED value. All right, and that'll give us input from the user. It'll convert it to a floating point number that we can put in here. And let's just go ahead and try this. And I forgot to uh, disconnect it as well. So at the end, I'll add that just after I finish. <clears throat> All right, so new LED value. And let's bring up uh, this, an image uh, video of the LED. All right, so new LED value, let's say that's going to be equal to five. Okay, it just barely went on, you can barely see it there. Let's go ahead and go to 100, and it's brighter. Let's go down back to two. Okay, just, you can barely see it on with the LED. Let's go back up to 70, or 50, 20, 30, okay, if I go to 120, it can only go to 100%. It's going to actually clip it there. It won't allow it to go any higher than that. Now let's try zero. Okay, when we do zero, it ends, but it's still connected. So I'm just going to insert cell below, and I'll do lab.close. All right, so it disconnected the lab. Where I really want that is after the loop. Okay, and I can delete this with double D, and it will delete that. All right, so here is my program. I could have also done something like lab.q1 and put in that same LED percentage value right there and adjusted the heaters. So let's just try this. We're going to print temperature one and all right, and give a user a chance to give some input. Okay, this is gonna be the heater and the LED value and it'll print out the temperature. So we could look and see what the temperature is and then adjust, continue adjusting the heater. Let's go ahead and just put in, um, all right, the temperature should start to increase here. Let's go back to 100. And the LED is an indicator of what percentage the heater is on. Let's just check this now, 60. Let's go back to 100. Okay, give it a lot of heat and we're going to see this, um, you know, actually it's going to start turning purple right here. Okay, that's when it gets above about uh, the thermochromic paint should start turning very pink when it gets above 99 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. All right, let's just go ahead and check that. All right, and then I could for example, just keep entering in new values. If I wanted to get up to 37, it's still climbing. Okay, I'm just entering in new LED values and then printing out the current temperature. All right, and then if I just continue entering 30 here, I'm going to see it come up. Wow, I did a pretty good job. Okay, I didn't expect it to kind of level out. Looks like it's still rising a little bit. Maybe go back down to 20 or 10. Okay, and if I hit zero, then it's going to shut everything off and close. All right, so there it is. There's our program right here that uh, loops through. And we added a little bit extra here to set the heater value and then also print 
the temperature. Okay, so with that, let's go on to our project. Let's continue that every time we add just a little bit to the project. And let's just change it to ask the user for an input. So this is a set the target temperature. Let's ask the user right here instead of 37. Um, all right, so let's go uh, float and we'll do an input target temperature. And let's say 37 degrees Celsius is recommended. Okay, if I run this, it's going to connect to the temperature control lab. And it looks like I forgot a closing parenthesis there. So I'll change that. There's some current temperatures as it goes through and now I don't have to enter in one every time I'm gonna have the program adjust the heater for me so I don't have to do it manually and adjust the heater okay so there it is uh, we'll add the logic later to adjust we haven't done that yet we just turned on the heater to 100 percent but we'll add that at a later point I just wanted to show that um, we can ask the user for input and we might in the future look up what is the target temperature based on the type of egg that we have in our incubator. All right, that's it for user input. The next one that we're going to do is on conditional statements such as if statements.